Welcome. This is Simeon for audio plug-in deals. And we're getting ready to step back into time once again to explore a couple of beautiful pianos provided by real samples. So come along. It's amazing when we think about piano libraries being time machines, and I know I've said this many times before, we are taking these instruments that are hundreds of years old, loading them into our samplers and putting them beneath our fingers. And it is an amazing experience. And so Real Samples has teamed up with Audio Plugin Deals once again to offer a rare piano bundle. And this is a, a collection of two pianos. One is a Swiss Grand, and the other is a really interesting one. And we're gonna take a look at both of those today. Okay, the first piano that we're gonna take a look at is the Swiss Grand. And the Swiss Grand is from the private collection of famed musicologist Andreas Berman. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Berman. And this piano is dated to 1860. That is what you're playing. You're playing an 1860 grand piano, and this is amazing. If you read about this, the um, piano company was called Uni and Hubert, <laughs> and it was the largest piano company in the world, pretty much, but the factory burned down, and but Thank goodness this piano was preserved and real samples like they always have a very grand history of doing is taking this and providing it for us to enjoy. I'm going to pull up contact and let's take a look at this. They give you a 16 layer, an 8 layer, and then a 32 layer addition depending on how how your CPU and that type of thing, uh, your overhead, uh, you can just select up to a 32 layer piano. And that's what I have loaded right here. And so let's just play around with this some more and enjoy this sound. It's amazing. So you notice that they've got uh, two layers, the note on and the release layers, because contact limits the amount of samples in a particular layer. So. One thing about this piano that they mention is the low end. So let's just kind of lay into this and see what happens.
It's close to Christmas time. <laughs> See, those 32 layers um, really give you just a lot of dynamic range. So let's, <laughs> let's open up the wrench here. And what the wrench does, it exposes all of the different uh, things that we can edit. And you can see here in the mapping editor, all of those 32 layers. So let's see, let's go to the effects. And you've got all of these uh, insert effects and I'm still learning about contact uh, on how to get more out of this. So we go down to insert effects and let's go to reverb and just do that and just see what happens. And then we can adjust a, a little bit the, the wet and the dry blend, the size of the room and the, de the, uh, the delay, t I mean the, yeah, the room time. got a really interesting attack to it. But what do you expect for an 1860 piano? It's incredible. Having these effects possibilities just expand what you can do with this. Let's just add something else. Just kind of get a little crazy. Let's go to the, uh, the modulation and um, faces. Let's just put some faces in here and just not mess with anything and see what happens. You see? I can't imagine them ever expecting their piano to sound like that, but you can do it. That's the beauty of sampling, the beauty of curating these. Uh, there, there's that word curating. I think, I think curating is going to go down uh, in 2021 as the probably the most used word of the year. But it's taking something and bringing it down to us so we can enjoy it preserving history, preserving these beautiful instruments. And that's what Real Samples has done. So let's close this out and let's go to something else. One of the interesting things that they've done, one of the interesting things that they've done is they've given us two tuning options. They've given us the original, I think it's 432, 432 Hertz. And so let's load that in. It's a little, you know, so 440 is a little bright. So let's just drag, I'm gonna drag that over. Uh, let's close the wrench first. I gotta close the wrench first. Now I'm gonna drag, and these are multis. So these load two different uh, instances of, you know, like two banks, one for the notes on and one for the release samples. So there we go. So I just drag, drag that over. And this is the 432, and let's listen to that. interesting your ear is perceiving something a little different now let me just throw in let's throw back in the 440 tuning 
I'm going to just uh, drag this over again. Just so we can hear the difference. Oh, you know what we'll do? Let's do this so we can, we can kind of hear them together. So I'm going to drag the 432 in and I'm going to merge these layers together. So we're going to have the original, the 440 here, and then we're going to have the 432 underneath. So I'm going to mute these. You hear how, you can hear how bright that is. Just a little bit. And we'll do the same thing. It's subtle, but it's, it's interesting. Now let's do this. Let's just play all of these together. And you can hear how much difference it is. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know. It's out of tune. <laughs> but that is so interesting. And let's just solo this. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't do that. Let's just mute this again. Just listen one more time. So it's very interesting, very subtle, but historical because, uh, you know, one of the things when they tune things at a little bit lower, it, it actually puts a little less stress on the piano uh, itself because, you know, there's not as much tension. When you, when you think that, you know, the, the tighter that you tune a string, the more tension that you're putting on there. And that's, that's one of the reasons why they would tune harpsichords a little bit lower, because just the physics of it. Uh, so that's uh, interesting. I'm glad that they give, have given us this option to have the historical tuning and the 440, which is more standard for us today. All right, let's take a look at the next piano. We're going to step into the doors of the Music Musical Instrument Museum in Brussels where they have preserved so many of these amazing instruments. And this is the Luthiel, or Luthiel, Luthiel piano. And this is the last one that's in existence. It's the only one of its kind uh, in the world that's still uh, playable. And it was uh, built in 1919. And it's really cool because it is a Playel piano. It's a Playel grand piano, but with the Luthiel, mechanics in it. And what this is, it's a way to, the ability to create a prepared piano of, of, of such using the different uh, mechanisms and stops of the luthiel mechanism. That's what you can kind of see in this picture here. Yeah, so you've got all of these different rails and felts that you pull the stops, the knobs, and it engages these really cool effects like a prepared piano would. So we've got all stops, then we've got the like a clavic like a clavichord, and then the harp tyre stop. And what that is, that's the felt layer. And then when you put the clavicin and the 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 tyre, I guess that's what they're calling that. It creates like a, a cymbalum effect, and you can see that they've given us so much. So I'm going to just let's just take a listen to the piano by itself without any of the preparations engaged. And what I like to do too, uh, when you load this patch in initially, it gives you 32 voices. I'm gonna bump this up to 128. Sometimes I go, I go as high as I can. <laughs> so here we go. that Playel 
that signature play L sound. And there is there is something about it that that is different than a Steinway, different than a Fazioli, different than a Busendorfer. It's got its own beautiful tone. And this was out, this is without any effects. Isn't that beautiful? And again, if you look at the, I'm gonna just pull up the mapping editor, you got 32, 32 layers, and that's really something. So they give you the option to have the preparation on the lower part and the upper part, and then they give you another preset that it's on the whole keyboard. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, so I'm gonna to go to the piano clavic and stop one and four complete, and that way we have the whole keyboard here. So here we go. So that puts a little interesting attack on there. So let's just play this some more. Hear that rattling down there in the bottom. Very cool effect. It just kind of has a little bit of uh, per percussion in there. Really nice and bright attack. So now let's uh, check out the the harp, tare, tyre, and this is the felt layer. So you can hear it sounds like it's being plucked like a harp. Very interesting. Especially when you get down the lower and the lower end like that, it really gives you some really neat effects. Now let's combine both the uh, the clavicin and the harp tyre together. And so what this does, it just gives you such versatility because you've got um, so many different combinations of these different preparations that you can put on uh, together. So this is like all stops, and they call this the symbol. When they put the uh, the clavicin and the harp tyree together, it uh, it's going to be like a symbol. So let's just check this out. And if it's your first time uh, visiting the channel, uh, please subscribe and click on those notifications. All that great stuff. It really helps to support uh, what we're doing. So thanks so much for that support. All right, here we go. This is the symbol. All stops, all the stops are out.
It's a, it's voices from the past. It's and I think Ravel actually wrote music for this instrument. And since none are in existence, this is the only way that you can you can recapture those pieces written specifically for this piano, uh, because the, you know there was uh, there would be a little difficulty in hauling a one of a kind piano and ex the only one in the world, you know, taking it around to different places in the world. So now you basically have the same thing virtually. Um, just the beauty of being able to sample and make it accessible to all of us. So I did something really interesting with the effects with uh, with this piano and I called it uh, I called it Christmas. It's just the time of the year and um, so I'm going to replace this multi and let's close the browser. So what I did, pop in the wrench here. I just put some uh, replica delay that's fun and reverb and put a little bit of flair uh, in there as well, just to kind of give us some really neat effects. And, you know, man, that's the fun part is to jump in there, click that wrench and experiment. And then if you find something that you like, uh, you can save that uh, as your own multi, as your own preset. So let's just take, uh, take a look at this or listen to this. And uh, you, you see with your ears. And so let's uh, just see what we can hear. So thanks for joining me. It's always fun to go back in time through these virtual instruments, these historical pianos, these one-of-a-kind experiences that you can experience for yourself. Again, this is Simeon. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>